Uh, can you hear me well at the back? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me today in London to perform this meetup. Uh, this is my first time uh, for this meetup. Um, so we are going to spend um, some time talking about Google Lighthouse custom audits for um, web performance uh, and beyond. And I got the new logo, you see? <laughs> Cool. Um, it doesn't work. The clicker is not working. Okay. Yep. You just need to come close to me. Okay. So um, I'm Ayman Lukil. I'm an international SEO consultant based in France. Um, helping companies being more visible on Google and sell more products and services. Um, I'm also a speaker in many events about web development, web performance, and SEO. Uh, and I'm actually, the fun fact is about uh, being an ex-developer. <laughs> I started making uh, development on my daily work. So please be indulgent with my quality of code. <laughs> um, and you can read my blog or post on iron-lookheed.com or follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Nukil Aaron. The big one. Okay. Oh. At the back of the bottom one. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, talking about performance metrics, I like this slide from Tommy Everts, uh, which says that we have many, many, many performance metrics very, very good, large spectrum of performance metrics, uh, which makes the, the job of choosing the right performance metric a little bit hard. And of course, it's harder to explain to customers what metrics should we follow and what we should measure, in fact. Um, so there are many universal metrics such as first meaningful paint, time to interactive, speed index, etc. Very useful, but they could have some limitations. So, what if the SMP, the first meaningful paint, can be set what is more than meaningful for the user? So, um, other limitations of speed index or time to interactive, for example, speed index could be take it with the sliders. So if we have a slider on a page that, that will move on, that will um, give us the wrong estimation of this metric. So the point here is to choose some universal metrics like FMP, time to interactive, speed index, but complete them with custom metrics uh, to measure what really matters for the user. Uh, working. Okay. Um, a very useful and fresh resource on web dev. Um, they they just announced the URL yesterday on Chrome Dev Summit. Um, it's very useful resource to to understand the performance metrics and help us choosing the right ones. Um, of course, uh, there is uh, a part talking about custom uh, performance metrics. So, um, what custom metrics do you use already or imagine on your work? Anyone using custom metrics on daily basis? Okay, so the heading and the hero image. Okay, super. So this could be an example of custom metrics, time to view image on a product page, for example. 
we could also have um, <laughs> yeah uh, so here is paragraph or heading for publishers new site etc and you could you could also have maybe the first second of a video you can imagine that for youtube or video publishers and one note for uh, your business internal applications or SaaS software the first element business elements on your interface for example for a ticketing software it could be time to first user story okay so every custom metrics we are able to measure it with lighthouse so in some um, in few minutes we will we, i will show you how to do it with google lighthouse uh, which is amazing so i will uh, tell you my story with lighthouse <laughs> it's kind of uh, fun uh, one day i was browsing the code in the repository on github and i dropped it by a recipes folder and the documentation uh, folder and this folder contains some quick code to, to start with building cool stuff with lighthouse and i was crazy knowing that we are able to extend lighthouse which is um, a very nice very nice uh, tool for measuring many things on the web <coughs> so uh, since lighthouse is my favorite web performance measurement tool and I start to imagine what we could build with this uh, hidden gem, the ability to create custom metrics and custom audits. So what we are going to achieve after this talk is trying to extend the five default audit categories in Lighthouse. So here, for example, I added the category, a new one, my hero image metrics. So this is the final result is to have a new category with custom set audits. It's clear? Okay. Let's go on. Um, so before diving in code, uh, let's uh, understand and explain the architecture of Google Lighthouse. Um, of course, there is an NPM module for Node.js, so we could use Lighthouse um, in a programmatic way. So uh, Lighthouse launches a Google Chrome instance and communicates with it through a driver, which is based on DevTools protocol. Okay? Um, at Lighthouse part, we have a gazer, which will collect the data from our page and send it as an artifact to the audit part. Okay? So the audit is uh, the part that will test and make assertion, pass, fail, and give the score to report generation part of the software. Okay? So at the end, we, we got our JSON or uh, HTML report to see the result. So um, we need three things to build a custom audit. And in fact, every metric Lighthouse, um, every metric that Lighthouse uh, generating today, such as the first full paint or uh, first content full paint, is going through the same pipeline. So today, when you run Lighthouse, the gazer collects the data, the data, uh, the audit will make assets and give us uh, the, the results in the report. So the requirements are one gazer, one audit, and one custom configuration to tell Lighthouse, hello Lighthouse, I have custom audits to, 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 make, to run with your default ones, okay? So, of course, we should first define our metric, our custom metric to test. This is the first step. So, like we said, maybe it's the hero image, the time to hero image, okay? And second step is, do we have the data to measure it? 
So ensure you have the data. And the third step is write the gator, then write the audit, and make or set up a custom configuration. Okay, so uh, let's take as, as a first example, the Pantoheo image, and let's imagine that the threefold is three seconds. So this is our metric. Pantoheo image on a product page uh, should display load uh, before three seconds, okay? Huh. To get the data, so we need to mark something, to add some some marker in the page to to give it to give us this information, and uh, we can use user timing API, which is very cool and simple to use. So the principle is easy. We we are going to add a performance mark at the level at which the image will display. Okay. So the performance dot mark method, and we will give a name to our marker. So here it will be hero image. So um, before writing any code, you could already test this on Google Chrome console. So if you if you write performance get entries by name hero image, you will get this answer. And the start time value is what we are looking for. So the, the image is appearing at 800 milliseconds um, at this example, okay? So we are going to open our product page and edit the, the source code, and we will add an unload element to add the marker. So on your main product, image we, we will add this marker so window performance mark hero image um, this one clear max is optional uh, but to be sure to clear previously stored markers this is optional but it's recommended to do it and just after the the image tag we are doing the same in the on the script tag um, as steve sounders suggests on the blog post um, we should take the higher value to be sure maybe the first value is just loading but not displaying. So to be sure the time at which the image uh, was displayed, take the higher value. Um, but it's, it's optional in this, in this case because we are just uh, trying to understand how to set up. Okay, so here I'm setting the variable, my load metric, which gets the start time value and it's stored at our page, okay? Okay, so now we are going to write here image gazer.js. This is our gazer, which is extends the default gazer of Google Lighthouse. And we make an instance of the driver and we will just gather the window dot my load metrics value and return it back for our audit. So the audit will catch this, this value and make the assertion, okay? Uh, of course, we should export the module to, to be uh, usable uh, at different place. Um, I, I, I should say that the gazer is able to do more complex things. But for the example, I, I make it a stupid simple. So just getting the, the data and send it to the audit. But in reality, in the gazer, we could make many, many, many cool stuff. So get the, da the data or uh, even run some JavaScript on the page before running Lighthouse. For example, if you, if you want to test something behind an authentication, so we, could, we are able to do it here, which is cool. Um, so next, we, we should write the audit. So um, I'm defining here the value of the th threefold. So it's three seconds, the max load time of my image. Um, and a custom audit 
has two parts. The first one is meta, metadata, about the name of the audit, the title, uh, failure title, and the description. And of course, we specify here the required artifacts, one or more. So, so here, our required artifact is time to view image, which is our data, okay? So we require the data of this gazer, and we define some metadata to be displayed later on the report. And the second part, so this is the real audit part. So here we are going to get the time to view image artifact value, and we will simply test if it's below the threshold of three, sec three seconds, sorry and return the result. So here, the real value is load metrics, and we are going to cast on number, so the result will be one or zero. Clear? Okay, so gather, we send the data to the audit, and the audit send the data to the configuration for report generation. So we are just creating an, extend, an extension of the default configuration. So we are creating a custom config file. And we say that we want that uh, Lighthouse run the default audit as well. And we specify our gazer ID and our audit ID, okay? And finally, we are creating the new category of tests. So here I'm giving this name, my new image metrics, which will, ap will appear on the, on the report. And this is important. So we are giving the weight on the audit. So here if, we, if the image will load um, before the three seconds, we will have 100 as a score. And if not, it will be zero, okay? So it's uh, kind of, we have, and, and also we have just one audit in this category, so the rating will be one for this. Okay, so now we, we are ready. We are, we are going to run this custom audit, specifying the custom configuration file, and just put your product page URL, okay? It's running. <laughs> And ta -da, we have our report with the metric. So my hero image, we got 100 scores. So our hero image is loading fast enough. And if we go down the page, we are going to see more details. But in this case, I, I didn't put any details. So just the, the audit path, okay? So, do we always need a gazer? What do you think? No? Right. The needs we have to, to be gathering the, the things that you already get from for the other. Um, D default? Yeah, the default? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's right. So, it depends on what you, you are looking for as data, but in many, many cases, the default gazers of Lighthouse are sufficient. We are going to see another example uh, that doesn't need a gazer, in fact. Just the audit and use the default one. So, what if we add another audit in the same category? Let's suppose it will be TTPP, <laughs> which is time to product price, maybe on the product page. So let's consider the threefold at one second. I want to show, uh, show up the price as fast as possible. So we are going to, to do the same thing and we are going to add this audit in our custom configuration, okay? So here I'm, I'm going to give a different weighting. So the hero image will, will get a rating of two, and the price product will get a rating of one. So if we run the custom audit, 
Uh, now we have 67 as a score because, sorry, so because our hero image is fast, but the price is not. Okay, so we could, we have this possibility to weight differently uh, the audit to have a, a score, uh, which is done on default uh, performance audits of Lighthouse. For example, the FMP, I think it's weighted on three or two, and the TTI is uh, maybe two, yeah. So this is the way to, to make ponderation and have a, a, a score. Okay, are you okay for another example? Okay, let's go. Um, I suggest this one. So it's very basic. It's the number of images on our on web page. It's kind of quantitative metric of, okay? So let's set the threshold on 15, okay? So our metric is number of image. And simple gazer. So we are not going to touch and edit our pages, okay? So we are just running the gazer and the audit. So here I'm instancing the driver and make query select all images tag and then get the length. So how many image tags do we have on our page? Okay, simple. The audit, so the first part is the metadata, the image metrics, image count audit, and our required artifact is image count, okay? And here, same principle, we are going to test if we have a uh, number of images which is below the threshold or not, okay? Uh, here I added an, a new attribute, which is display value, which will display the number of images on the report, which, kind, which is kind of useful to see how many images uh, my page ha has. Okay, so in the custom config, uh, we have one audit, which is image count audit, uh, and the report is, oh, zero. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I can't see the details. Okay, so the details here. So we have 137 images on a Amazon uh, listing page. <laughs> Too many images. Okay. The third one, the last one. Okay. So um, I'm. We are going to 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 create a, a new custom audit. This time without a gazer. So we are we are going to use the default the default gazer, which is dev tools log. Okay. And the 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 metric is the total size of fonts use it on our page, also quantitative metric. Um, so required artifact is just an audit. So the required artifact is DevTools uh, logs. And the audit is, of course, you are going to get all the, the logs of network requests of our pages and, and test if it's resource type font. If it's a font, we will count the total bytes, so we will add, let's suppose we have four fonts, we are, we are going to, to, to make a sum, a total of the transfer size, okay? So this is the way to do it, and we are going to test if it's uh, inferior to one kilobyte, for example, and make this test. So here, I tested on my personal website, I have just one font, <laughs> And the size is uh, 50, 58 kilobytes, which is uh, below the threshold. And my category font size, it's okay. 100 as a score. Okay, uh, I want to say that I put all the code examples on my GitHub uh, repository. So uh, you could uh, make better custom metrics starting from, uh, from this basic example. And another way to extend Lighthouse capabilities is about creating plugin. The result will be similar, but it's another way to organize a group of audits 
and putting them. Um, for example, we could imagine a plugin for WordPress, which is the case. Uh, the Lighthouse team uh, are working on it, uh, or for Angular or React. So we could create a plugin which will be able to install it in parallel as a dependency for Lighthouse. Okay, so we we, you, we organize all our audits on a plugin, uh, so we could check the the, the recipe for for, for this. Um, it's another way to to expand the Lighthouse. Oh, too fast. Okay. Um, for defining the custom metrics, for brainstorming about them, there are a bunch of useful APIs. For example, in, in the first one, we, we, we used user timing API, but there are others, uh, for example, performance observer, which is very useful, uh, long tasks API, for example, for taking the long task on the page and creating a custom metric about it, or uh, element timing API or the timing API. All of those API um, allows, allow us to imagine new custom metrics depending on the business needs and the user, okay? And of course, custom audits and custom metrics, um, we, we could measure them and create them with other tools. Uh, web page tests already have this functionality, which is very, very nice. Thank you, Pasfin. Um, we have Ekmai Impulse, which, su which supports custom metrics. DBUB, is it? <laughs> and speed code. So there are other alternatives uh, depending on your needs, on um, on your needs for custom metrics. Okay. So we have many many cases and many use cases for custom metrics. Try mainly to focus on the user. What are the real elements? What 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 does matter the most for the user? This is the question to answer to define your custom metrics. Um, try to correlate them with business metrics, for example, bounce rate, revenue, conversion rate, and, and try to, to follow, follow these custom metrics over time and see if it correlates. Um, it's in fact a good way to, to set up a performance culture in the, in the enterprise to, to encourage teams to work on and enhance custom metrics. And, uh, of course, the good the good thing is Lighthouse CI, which is launched at, the, uh, at Chrome Dev Summit. Very very cool interface. So we could plug this with your GitHub, for example, and make measures every commit for every commit before merging code to master. This is so useful to compare how we are performing, and it helps as uh, for sustaining effort on performance. So this is very, very nice to try, uh, to try and to, to set up in, in development framework and workflow. This is one, thank you. And I would love to answer your questions. So um, your, your example one was obviously like showing an image, but your example two and three were both kind of performance budgets. Yeah. So why would you choose to use custom metrics instead of using Lighthouse's built-in performance budget support? Yeah, good question. Um, it was for illustrating examples. Of course, the, 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 the Lighthouse wallet budget existed, and uh, it's very, very, very nice. Uh, but this is just for exploring the artifacts and how to use uh, them to build another uh, other custom metrics. Yeah. How would you do? Oh, sorry. How would you do this form? Say you've got multiple products with multiple domains. Could you actually have separate audits for different domains, all in a single file? In the URL, you run these audits and custom audits, and then another other yeah. another set of audits. Um, I think the one of approaches is about. Um, categorizing your pages. So let's say product pages, product listing pages, static ones, editorial, blog, etc. And um, 
don't test everything. So the, the point is to, to make samples and, and try to, to, to enhance over time, make increments of enhancement. Um, of course, there, there is an aspect on Lighthouse is about variability, uh, which is kind of challenging. The score <laughs> moves sometimes. So uh, try to well isolate the testing environment on lab synthetic tests uh, to, to have the less variability possible. Um, but yeah, creating types of page, taking samples, um, validate the results with uh, the field from Google Chrome Experience uh, Report, which is a real user monitoring uh, database open, uh, open for everyone. So this is the, the, the idea. So could it detect the URL and then run a set of audits yeah. depending on that? Uh, yeah, uh, you could, for example, prove it on a set of a URL and then configure it. For example, Lighthouse CI, in the configuration, you are, there is a possibility to, to, to set the URLs, the group of URLs, and automate things, which is very, very useful. Other questions? 